Hey guys, Mike here with everything about concrete.com. Now this video is going to be about pouring and finishing concrete in cold temperatures and in particularly freezing cold temperatures. I wanted to make this video to show you guys the differences between what it's like pouring when the temperature outside is below 32 um, versus pouring in the spring, summer or fall when it's a, when it's above freezing and when we can pour these floors, you know, before they stop building the house or decking the the foundation over so for you new guys here my name's Mike Day my channel is all about concrete a lot about concrete flat work stamp concrete uh, finishing concrete epoxy floors that kind of stuff so if you like that stuff go ahead down there and hit subscribe and hit the little bell notification I come out with videos usually on Mondays and Fridays so as you can see it's it's freezing outside it's seven o'clock in the morning it was about 25 degrees when we got here and this is the middle of January and I live in Maine, so it's cold for about three or four months up here. And this is what we have to deal with in the winter a lot of times. You know, the houses are built, floors are decked over, and the access isn't very good. So we got to make a decision, you know, what kind of access do we have and how can we get the concrete there? Do we need to pump it or can we somehow figure a way to get the concrete in another way? And with this one, you know, I had the option to pump it but it's, it's $950 to get a pump there. Or we could cut a hole in the floor, you know, and stick our, our tremie there with the boot down through the hole and right into the chute and then shoot it around. And I mean, that presents some struggles too. I mean, it's, it's no fun to pull the concrete around, but for us, for this floor, you know, this was about a 1,500 square foot floor, so around, you know, seven, it was about 17 yards. It wasn't that big where we needed we thought we needed a pump to do this so we decided just to use our 16 foot chute and cut a hole in the floor right you know where the front door is upstairs outside you know and back the truck up to that front door and then he could he could dump the concrete right down into that tremie and we just pull it around so as you can see there's styrofoam down they got two inch styrofoam down here for a base and there's crushed rock under that and we're using a 4000 psi mix here we got fiber mesh in it for reinforcement. That's why we don't use wire mesh or rebar in our basement floors like this. It's got fiber mesh in it. That's all it needs. And there's hot water in the concrete. You know, the concrete's got... And I wanted you to take note of that. Look at the air right now. It's pretty clear in there. And as we get dumping more and more concrete, take notice of what happens. It starts getting a little foggier and a little foggier. That's because the concrete temperature is so much warmer than the air temperature. So you'll see what we have to deal with there. But like I said, the concrete has hot water in it, about 160 degree water. It's a 4,000 PSI mix. And we put calcium chloride in it too. So it's going to set up pretty fast on us. You know, and it's got a water reducer in it so we can pour about a six inch slump. But we have a limited amount of time to work with this stuff before it starts setting up so much that it gets hard to work with. It gets hard to screed and bull float. So we... You know we're kind of hustling we know by using this company a lot just about how much time we got so we're trying to get this first truck just dumped out and get him out of there and get it screeded before we start with the second truck and you can see the air in there it's getting a little foggier now that we got you know seven or eight yards dumped out on the ground and what we're doing now is we're just striking our wet pads it, as you can see on this lolly column right here to the left it's got some red tape around it the top of that tape is the top of the concrete floor so we use that as our guide we shot that on there with a laser as well as uh, you know a, a line around the outside perimeter we snapped a chalk line using the laser to mag our edges by so we're trying to get this one truck dumped out get him out of there then we can get the second truck down around the back of the house um, over here you know by where the video camera is there's a door and we'll be able to get the chutes through the door to get the second truck dumped out. But we like to get this first truck dumped out and get them out of there rather than let that concrete sit in the drum of the concrete truck. The longer it sits in that drum, the more it creates heat. Boy, look at the air now. Now it's really getting foggy there because the steam and the fog is just coming right off the concrete because the concrete's so much warmer than the air temperature in there. So we're having to deal with that. Um, we do have a heater blowing in the door, but there's just so much cold air coming in right now, we can't keep it out. You'll see how we deal with that in a, in a little bit here later on in the video, so keep watching for that. 
So we're getting it screeded now before the concrete starts setting up on you. And you know, if you wait too long, that stuff, it's gonna be hard to kick, hard to screed, hard to rake, and really difficult to bull float, especially with all that calcium we got in it. And if we don't put the calcium in it, if we just use hot water down here, you know, we're gonna be here till till late at night finishing this thing, trying to get a good finish on it. So the whole reason for putting the cow in is, you know, to get out of here in a decent hour. If we start at seven in the morning, you know, we want to be in about an eight or a 10 hour work day to get this finished. We don't want to be 12 to 16 hours if we don't need to be. So, you know, we know what we're up against. And if we put it in, we know how much we got to hustle to get it down. So now we got the second truck here, a little bit different angle. And that's as close as he could get. He could just get his, he's got four shoots on there about four feet long. That's as close as he could get to that back door. So we had to use the concrete chute for that also. And that's how we're gonna finish up the pour right through that door like that, just angling the chute at different angles. So, you know, it, it's quite a bit more difficult to pour a floor like this in the winter versus the spring, summer, or fall. If, you know, if this was September, October, or in the summer, you know, we're pouring right over the wall with, with no house being built, no decked over, and it would literally take half the time to pour this thing, and it's 10 times easier to pour it also. So it's a little bit more of a struggle pouring in the winter, but it's just stuff you gotta deal with being a concrete guy. You know, you gotta, you gotta take the good with the bad, and sometimes even the ugly, and you know, it all evens out in the end, but it's just the things you have to deal with to make your customers happy. And this customer was pretty happy that we saved them $950 by not getting a pump truck and by deciding just to pull it around the way we're doing it right now. So we're getting this stuff screeded down and you can see why the cold air is getting in there. We gotta have that door open. It's like I said, it's about 30 degrees outside, 25, 30 degrees. And all in all, this, this took us about, you know, two hours to pour this out get it all poured out and bull floated versus if we had just poured over the wall with no with no house being built it would have took us about an hour probably to get this poured so we're going to get this finished up and then i'm going to show you guys how we're going to finish this thing here and why we finish it the way we do during the winter so we'll get it i'm going over there getting that bull floated it's getting it smoothed out it's we're working fast enough so the concrete's still pretty easy to work with it's not setting up on us too fast um we like that there's styrofoam down. The styrofoam helps hold the heat in the concrete. It doesn't, the concrete doesn't cool off quite so fast when there's styrofoam under it versus if it was just cold crushed rock with you know some poly over it or something, then that really draws the heat out of the concrete and slows down the set. And you can see the fog in there now as I'm finishing up bull floating. So it was pretty foggy when we got done I'll just call it fog, it's really steam. Now you can see we're putting the heat back in, we're closing that door off, and you watch as the time goes by here how the heat takes care of that, that mist or that fog for us. See how it just kind of is starting to dissipate? It's going away, and eventually it just disappears on us. So now we're back to normal, and the temperature's rising in there, and we, we could get it up to about it was about it ended up being about 40 degrees and sunny out this day so it was pretty easy to get the temperature up to about 60 65 in there with that heater and now what we're doing because that heat just wants to rise and go up through the deck we're putting some blowers in there and just getting the air moving around a little bit better and this is how we're going to finish it today with our knee boards and just we're just going to finish it by hand by mag floating it and then steel troweling it and the reason we finish a lot of floors like this in the winter, even ones this size, is because we, you know, we could put a power trowel in here, that's for sure, you know, no problem there, but it, it takes longer to finish with a power trowel than it does by hand. The power trowel is gonna continually work up more paste and just make the drying process slower than it does by hand. Plus, the power trowel is gonna give off carbon monoxide. And that we, we definitely don't wanna be breathing that. You know, we've all been doing this 20 years or more and we've breathed enough carbon monoxide in our lives that we just don't want to deal with that anymore. We've all got sick by it, you know, and puking and all that good stuff that carbon monoxide does to you 
that we would rather go in here and work a little harder by finishing this with hand than put a power trial in here and get sick from the fumes. And yes, yes, there's a door open there. And yes, some of the fumes would go out that door, but not all of them. You know, you're still going to end up breathing some of that stuff. So we, we dealt with it for years. We know exactly in what it's going to do. And, you know, we would much rather have the two of us and sometimes the three of us just finish it by hand. And we can, we've been trialing so long that we can make floors look really, really smooth and really good by hand that after they cure out and they bleach out all white, you can't even really tell the difference. They're so smooth. So this is how we deal with uh, concrete floors pouring and finishing in the winter and the cold temperatures. You know, we it's a little bit more of a struggle. Like I said, we take the good with the bad. And if you can call this bad, I mean, we're working. That's not bad. And all I mean by bad is it's just a little harder. You got to deal with the putting up with a little bit more pulling and putting up, you know, just working a little bit harder. But if you're a concrete guy, you know all about hard work. That's not really that big of a deal. And we just go about our jobs, get the job done, and then move on to the next one. You can see I showed up there. I was out doing some estimates after the pour. I had to leave for a couple hours. And then I came back to help the guys do some some hand finishing. It's always easier having an extra hand. I mean, two guys can finish twice as fast as one guy and three guys really speed things up. So I don't mind jumping right in there and helping them whenever I can. That uh, The reason I'm resting over there is that that piece is firming up pretty good. So I'm using my mag float. I'm working up the cream, working up the paste, and then I'm hand troweling it right after to get it smooth. So anyway, we ended up hitting this thing about four or five times by hand before we finished it up. And it came out real smooth, and then we sawed our control joints in it right after. That's how hard it got. We finished. We started pouring about 7 in the morning, and we ended up sawing this thing by by 3.30. So we got our expansion joints all sawed in by 3.30, if that gives you an idea how fast this thing dried for us today. And uh, the heat really helped, and the blowers really helped. You know, getting some air moving around helps dry up the moisture and the humidity in there. That, that heater throws off a lot of moisture and a lot of humidity, so... If you just button it right up, that actually slows it down a little bit. Even though it warms up in there, there's so much moisture in the air that the concrete doesn't dry quite as fast. So by putting a couple blowers in there and just moving some air around, it uh, increases the dry time quite a bit is what we found. So that's, that's how we deal with stuff in the winter, guys. I want to thank you guys for watching. And if you, if you haven't subscribed yet, go down there and hit subscribe now. Come out with videos every Monday and Friday, and we'll see you on the next one.